Well, a two-phase lockdown is officially underway in Shanghai as Chinese officials look to control the latest outbreak uh, in COVID-19. It is, by the way, the largest outbreak since the pandemic began uh, more than two years ago. The eastern part of China's largest city remains largely shut down, raising concerns about the economic impact of China's zero COVID policy. Let's bring in Yahoo Finance's Anjali Kamlani, who's tracking the very latest for us. And, and Anjali, of course, this comes as the Chinese government Government has been trying to reassess this zero COVID policy, trying to tackle the outbreaks, but at the same time be a little more targeted so the economy doesn't just shut down. Absolutely. And you saw this play out, as you mentioned, you know, in 2020, when we first saw the first waves hit China, uh, the officials then said that they would not be locking down the entire city in the way that they are now. They had a targeted, you know, residential areas. But what we see now is this two phase uh, lockdown really affecting uh, the quieter, what is known as a quieter part of the city, the eastern part during the week. And then heading into the weekend is when the busier side of town is set to be under lockdown, tests underway, millions of tests have been already completed as the country faces yet another record breaking day with more than 4,000 cases reported. So all of this coming into play as we see questions come up, not just about the zero COVID policy, but as well uh, about uh, China's own vaccine, which is uh, of concern right now with low vaccination rates in the elderly. That is at play. That's the concern as we've seen throughout these waves, the elderly and the more vulnerable individuals of society get impacted the hardest. So we're still waiting to see how this all pans out. But as you mentioned, really concerning, uh, you know, largest city, 26 million people under lockdown. And we've seen that that has been at play across the world uh, when it comes to this VA2 variant. Uh, yeah, Anjali, that chart is just jarring. Uh, I mean, let's broaden out, though, and talk about the global story here. We know that that Omicron variant BA2 is now the dominant strain. Here in the United States, what does that kind of pose in terms of risk? We know that people are basically treating their days like they are normally pre-COVID. Uh, what's the update on the spread of that variant, specifically here stateside? Well, as you mentioned, Brian, that's exactly what prompted the White House and then the FDA to discuss additional boosters, going back to the point about the vulnerable individuals in society. Just today, the FDA authorizing as an option a fourth dose for those 50 and older, specifically for the mRNA uh, vaccine. So that's Pfizer and Moderna. And that includes as well 12 and older who are immunocompromised for Pfizer and 18 and older uh, that are immunocompromised for Moderna. And this is at least at least four months after that prior booster dose. Now, this also throws into question what is going to happen on that April 6th FDA advisory committee meeting date, which was set uh, ahead of this announcement, uh, and what they will be discussing as a result for the broader population, whether or not there will need to be more boosters for the general population. That has become a question on whether or not healthier individuals can rely on the current level of boosting or if more will be needed, especially for mRNA doses. Uh, meanwhile, we know that there are others also, of course, waiting for additional doses. So a lot uh, at play here. And this is why uh, the U.S. is pretty concerned about this. So we'll have to wait and see, uh, you know, next week what comes of that discussion and what the concerns really are about the BA2 variant. We know the wave is underway. Uh, we've seen it sort of pop up in the northeast and south, but the level of impact is yet unknown. Back to you. Anjali Kamlani staying on top of all of those developments for us. Thanks so much.